okay so uh, this is another very important concept in angular uh, without uh, data binding there won't be any technical interview uh, in angular uh, definitely they will ask about uh, uh, data binding because uh, data binding is the magic behind uh, the view updation from the typescript class right so whatever field you update in your typescript class immediately that uh, updation will be reflected in the template uh, the the ui template so this this uh, uh, magic is basically called data binding so the binding uh fields from the typescript class and uh the template the ui user interface so this binding is basically this relation is basically called data binding right so this this is this will reduce a lot of uh developer time um like uh for example in order to write such a such a arrangement using only javascript then it will be very difficult you have to always watch for the changes in 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 the fields or variables and upon changing a variable you just have to trigger another event uh, to change it in the ui so that the change will be reflected so that's how you do in javascript right but um, if you want to implement that using the pure javascript or like um, even with the jquery also it will be very uh, complicated but angular did all these things in the background so that we don't have to worry as a developer working on application we can just say uh, define a variable in the the uh, typescript class and we can just use the interpolation syntax in the template and they both will be in sync always if one changes it will reflect the value in uh, other place so this data binding is uh, uh, not only one way it can be two way also so two way meaning let's say you change value in typescript class that will be re immediately reflected in the um, UI, right? So that is one way. If we, if we take this image, right? So this is your model, model meaning your variable, and uh, this is your view, okay? View will be derived from the template, right? Template is just HTML, but when you uh, look at, look at uh, when application is running, it will generate view. So that's the reason um, we have these two here. So template is basically, uh, HTML. Your view is the uh, execution context. When you're executing, it is called UI uh, view. So uh, when your model, your variable are, variables are changed in your TypeScript, it will re reflect immediately in the uh, view, right? So this is called one-way binding. So only one side uh, it is happening, right? From model to view. Or if you change it in the view, then uh, in the model it will be updated. So that is called, uh, again, one-way binding. When these two are combined, then it is called two-way binding. Meaning, if you change value in here, it will reflect in the view. Or if you change in the view, it will reflect in the model. Okay. In order to see um, two-way binding, we have, to, uh, we have to look at the input example, input uh, uh, text box example, because um, when you bind that input text box to a variable in uh, in your TypeScript class, then if I type something in the text box, that value will be immediately reflected in the variable from the class. Or if you change value in the TypeScript, then that value will be immediately reflected in your uh, text box from the view. So this two two way with the two sides, right? So the the view is in sync uh, with both. So this is called two-way binding. So the difference between one-way binding and two-way binding is one-way binding happens from uh, uh, a model to view or view to model. But two-way binding happens both ways, model to view, view to model. Okay. So the property binding. So property binding is uh, basically we have many properties or many attributes in um, uh, HTML, right? Um, in, in the basic HTML, we have many um, attributes, something like you know, disabled or um, this is like the target or <clears throat> the title or uh, this is called inner text. 
or in a HTML. So all these properties we have for each uh, um, HTML element. So in order to change those or in order to uh, uh, enable those or disable those based on some field from the TypeScript class, then uh, we use this um, the property binding. Okay. So for example, in order to disable a button until unless a form is completely uh, valid, so some, sometimes there will be mandatory fields. Sometimes there will be uh, um, um, valid values like email or uh, valid numbers like age. It cannot go more than 100, right? So, so all these kind of validations will be there in the form. And until unless that entire form is valid successfully or validated successfully, you cannot uh, submit that form in some cases, right? So in that case, you can disable that button until that form is valid. So uh, this way you can you can basically uh, uh, disable that button, right? So this is called property binding. So basically you you, you are binding uh, uh, Angular uh, a variable or like a, a, class, a TypeScript class variable to a property of the uh, element, okay? So there is a difference between uh, normal property and uh, uh, Angular uh, property because uh, if it is a normal property, then there won't be this angular brackets, not angular, sorry, the square brackets, right? So it will be like disabled equals to true if it is a plain HTML. But angular offers the same thing with this square bracket so that we will bind this uh, property of the tag with some dynamic value, which is derived from TypeScript class. So that is that's a, that's why we call it property binding. So uh, we can directly use this also without uh, using the square brackets. But for that, we cannot uh, get value from um, the TypeScript class. The is disabled is a TypeScript uh, uh, field, uh, the the class field from your component class. So because we have the square brackets, we are able to access it. But if you don't have this. Um, brackets then this is like a direct value of sending to the disabled property okay so if i can uh, show this an example app component dot html let me remove this and put it here normally your html tag will look like this like this disable true So we cannot give this value. Uh, let's create this value in the app component dot ts equals true. Okay. No local host four two double zero. So it is saying both are disabled because we disabled both. This is true, and even this one also true from the class. Let me change it to false. Now this button is enabled, right? So this is still disabled, but this button is enabled. I can click on this. Now let me go back here and change it to false.
okay i think we cannot give values here either disable or we have to remove this yes so that is normal html uh, the plain html so if you use directly this we have to basically cannot control uh, cannot control based on some boolean value from our uh, class right so if you use this property a uh, property binding this is called binding the brackets so this property binding then we can basically uh, enable or disable the disability of a of a field or of a button uh, from our class so we have more control now uh, event binding so not only properties or fields we can bind we can bind events also um, you, uh, earlier in javascript we have to use on click event we can we can use on click event to call any javascript methods using the pure html but uh, uh, angular gives us um, uh, this special syntax for us to bind any event okay so the difference between uh, event binding and property binding is the syntax. So in property binding, we use square brackets, right? But whereas event binding, we use the parentheses. Okay. Event is always assume that uh, uh, you can call a method. Okay. When uh, event happens, you can call a method. So that uh, uh, the method has the parentheses uh, syntax, right? The same way events has the parentheses whereas fields have uh, the uh, field doesn't have anything right so uh, that's the reason we use this uh, square brackets so uh, remember that way it will be easy for you so whenever event occurs basically we call a method the method will have the round brackets or the parentheses so that's the reason we include event name in between the parentheses so if you see here the syntax right target event now um we can basically use there will be like many events like many events uh here this is click event we have double click we have uh, mouse enter mouse leave uh, drag and drop and we have plenty of uh, uh, events to uh, uh, even events in uh, browser so that all the events basically uh, angular support all the events only thing is you have to change the event name in between these parentheses that's it and the, when that event occurs then it will it will call this method so in this case we see the uh, input uh, event right so input event is nothing but whenever you are started typing in input uh, uh, box then for each key enter it will call this method for each key enter and uh, also it's not that only one method you can call you can basically call more than one method but uh, to call uh, more than one method you have to put a semicolon after each uh, method call so here we are calling save and then show notification that uh, save happened successfully right so the same way uh, you can put a semicolon here and write any number of methods all those methods will be called when that event occurs let me uh, run this one here handle input we don't have handle input so let me go back here and add handle input uh, param console dot log param i'm printing the entire thing let me go here it's not showing yeah F12, go to console, clear. So I just typed yes, and it printed the event here. So in the event, the data is yes. Let me type one more character. 
see it again uh, triggered one more event with that entered character so if i start typing so for each character it will basically um, uh, trigger the uh, the method call even if i remove also it will basically uh, do the same thing but when i remove it is basically sending null value when i type in uh, 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 type anything then that event is coming here okay that's the difference you can basically go with uh, go through all these uh, events available in angular uh, angular dot event binding Somewhere we should see the list of events. Yeah, you can see all these things. Click, double click, submit, blur, focus, scroll. Even for scroll also, there is a event. Copy, paste, and key up. If basically, key up, we, we use this for uh, shortcuts. Like um, when there will be some website, right? You, you can basically uh, do control S, uh, control X. So all those shortcuts, um, whenever that shortcuts happen, uh, uh, we can basically call some method um, to achieve some certain functionality. Mouse up, mouse down, mouse enter, drag and drop, drag over. So all these events basically supported by Angular using the same syntax, right? So event name in the middle, and you have uh, open parentheses and close parentheses. And... Uh, so uh, the, the class and CSS binding, basically this is uh, nothing but a property binding kind of thing, but uh, properties are a little different when compared to uh, the, the CSS styles, right? Because CSS, uh, when, when, you, when you say ng class, you can give basically uh, multiple uh, values, like multiple class names. And if you say uh, ng style, then you can basically give uh, an object of uh, styles, right? So this is this is not like uh, just a property binding and uh, adding a value. So this is kind of a, a multiple uh, values you can give using the syntax. And uh, also you can bind an object, not only single field like true or false or some text, you can, you can bind uh, an object here. Uh, to the style or to the uh, CSS classes also because this also an object uh, object right it opens with the the flower base and the close ball base so we can provide an object here uh, using the ng class uh, uh, directive so uh, let's see the syntax so syntax is just like property binding but uh, you'll have ng class here and uh, um, the un one more difference is uh, in, in, in case of property binding, you will have only the property name, but here we have ng uh, prefix here, ng class and ng styles, right? ng style, not styles. So uh, there are three three ways of syntax uh, ng class supports. Um, one is uh, you can just provide list of class values using a space uh, like this it will work or you can basically uh, provide an array and uh, array basically contains comma separated strings right so that is also valid and the third way is the object first one is list of values direct values with the space just like a string and second one is uh, array and third one is object so object will start with this uh, flower 
brace and close the throw brace and uh, this syntax is little uh, uh, different than the first two because it will support expressions for each class so this is class one uh, it has an expression this expression must always return either true or false same way we'll we can have another class and another expression same way you can have any number of uh, classes with the different different expressions so only when those expressions are true then this class will be added to the um, uh, element if one expression is true and other expression is false then the true expression class is added to the element but not the false one so the same way you can have 10 uh, conditions 10 expressions and 10 classes uh, out of which five are true and five are false then only five classes will be added and the rest of the five which are false will not be added so let let's see uh, this example okay this is yellow and uh, this is bold and do we have those classes here no okay so let me add quickly these classes hello background color hello another is start bold font weight bold okay so let me go back to the html yeah so the expression is true i have hard coded here so because this expression is true by default these two classes will be added to uh, this paragraph tag you go here and see i can see uh, the styles are applied so i can inspect and see for this paragraph tag uh, i added an object right so this is this is the syntax we added ng class equals to the object but uh, what it added it added a class attribute and then it added yellow and bold two classes with the space separator so that's the reason because we have uh, the 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 CSS here, right? So for bold case, font weight is bold, and for yellow case, background background color is yellow. So now let me go back and change it to false. Now this yellow will be added, bold will be removed. See, only yellow is there, but uh, the bold bold class is not here. Okay. Yeah. So this this way you can basically instead of uh, putting expression here directly, you can put this field in uh, the, the TypeScript class like this. I can use this uh, field name directly here. Now, oh, yellow is added because this is fault bolt is not added uh, because the uh, show yellow is true. That's the reason uh, the yellow uh, class is added. Okay. So, the same way for ng style also, uh, it supports the multiple types of syntax. Basically, uh, CSS classes are just names, right? So, that's the reason. We can have uh, names like this, uh, class names, uh, either array or space separated. This support, this syntax is valid in uh, CSS classes. But whereas styles, style each style is a key value uh, pair. You always have left side is a key and right side is a value. That's the reason the ng style support key value pairs uh, object, right? So this is an object and you have a key here and uh, colon and the value so basically it's a json object so in the other way is let's say this has uh, the units right the uh, px uh, the pixel c unit and uh, 
it, it supports basically instead of directly giving like this you can say font type and size dot px and a colon then you can just enter 20 there so just like this right width is a pixel uh, width must have the unit right whether inches or pixels or um, rem so that way uh, we can give pixels here uh, either either after 10 you can give pixel or uh, width dot px i mean not px it can be any unit and then uh, you can give this number directly so this is useful uh, in case of you already know what size to give in the in the uh, template but in case some 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 sometimes what will happen this value must be derived dynamically from your typescript class but uh, instead of hard coding and uh, not hard coding instead of uh, appending this number and uh, the uh, units uh, here that is uh, like bad practice so what can what we can do is we can say width.px and this must be a variable from our typescript class so dynamically the value can change and uh, once the value is changed this px will be appended dynamically by the angular framework and then it will change it to width 10 pixel or 20 pixel or 30 pixel depending on our uh, 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 our value returned from the typescript class okay and um, and uh, this is this is nothing but a uh, uh, ternary expression uh, it will check whether uh, this condition is true or not if it is true after question mark uh, value will be returned if it is false then uh, this one will be returned okay so in this case based on this condition if this is to status is er uh, status equals error then uh, it will it will add the background color as red if status is uh, not an error then the background color will be changed to blue okay this is just a ternary expression it's not different uh, different than this one okay it is same as this one so any questions so far oh no i'm good okay and mm -hmm. apart from um, uh, these bindings we have uh, attribute binding attribute binding is uh, uh, just like property binding and uh, uh, class or style binding right so it's like field binding that only difference is uh, some 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 attributes which are which are not um, not uh, not that uh, useful not, I, I cannot say useful uh, not 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 useful for our business logic so basically sometimes these kind of uh, attributes like area label area name and uh, the call span uh, uh, these these uh, attributes we can bind using the special syntax okay so this is the binding syntax the square brackets and then uh, we can say attribute attr stands for attribute dot whatever attribute you are planning to bind okay so this will this will be applicable only for the special special um, attributes but uh, mostly we will not be using these things in our application unless your application is a public facing application and which must support the um, accessibility right so accessible these are all accessibility um, related uh, attributes so the syntax is your uh, open bracket attr dot then your um, the attribute name equals to the expression or text so whatever name so this must be um, it's not like uh, it, it will uh, return uh, boolean value or something sir it can be anything whichever that attribute supports if this attribute supports some name then it will be a string if this attribute supports some um, number, then uh, it can be a number. So just like this, call span is a number, right? So I can say attr dot call span equals to twenty or thirty. So like that. So I think uh, today I'll stop uh, it here, and uh, but I'll strongly recommend you to go through uh, all these things because. We are just uh, we are just walking through all these uh, topics again, um, and and uh, if you don't spend time, then it will be 
it will be again uh, you'll forget again sooner yeah sure